Hey Felts, in this video I'm going to show you how to upload a shapefile into Felt. And to do that, I need a shapefile. So I'm in the Natural Earth website and I'm going to download a very popular um, data set, which are the countries for the whole world, in shapefile format. I just press download countries and I'm going to get these as a shapefile contained inside a zip file. Okay, now onto a Felt map. And the easiest way to get this data in is just to drag and drop this file into Felt. Now, as you can see, we didn't even have to worry about it being a shapefile or not, because Felt is just going to take that zip, look into the contents, find any kind of geospatial data it can, and upload it to a Felt and add it as a layer. But if you want to take things a bit slower, we can also use the Upload Anything button. OK, so in this case, in my downloads, I have the folder that's been extracted from the zip, and I can have the shapefile contents. And a problem with Esri shapefile that some people have is that it's actually a multi-part format, which means that the Esri shapefile is composed of three, at least three, but up to six um, different files. And many people tend to think that the shapefile is the .shp. So if you try to add that into a classic GIS, it'll normally fail. Um, fortunately, Felt instead gives you a warning that tells, hey, I've got this part, but I also need these other parts for this to work. Um, OK, so we're going to do that again. But instead of getting just the .shp, we're also going to get the .prj with the projection info, the .dbf with the attribute table, the .shx with the spatial indexes, and the .cpg with the encoding information, and upload those instead. And now you can see that there is no warning, and they're all uploading together. It's going to take a bit longer because it's bigger than the zipped files format, but the result is going to be exactly the same, which is this pretty cool countries dataset. Okay. That's all. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.